Does it feel impossible to buy your next or first home due to the rising interest rates? You're not alone. Many people have been on freeze with the rapid changes in affordability in today's market. We're gonna talk more about that today. My channel is designed to help you navigate all things real estate. Before we dive in, I would like to invite you to hit that subscribe button to stay connected with me. While you're at it, go ahead and hit that little bell so you don't miss more videos like this one. If we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Caitlin Henderson and I serve buyers and sellers in navigating their real estate moves in the Middle Tennessee area. I was raised in the business and in the area and believe in authentic real estate. On this channel, I keep it real and show you what it looks like to buy and sell in Tennessee. Let's get started. You've heard me say before, if you've been on my channel before, and this won't be the last time I say this. Unfortunately, shows like Selling Sunset and HGTV make it look like it should always be sexy and an easy process to find a Pinterest worthy home. However, reality is, is that recently many home buyers have been discouraged by lack of affordability with the interest rates rising and lack of options as far as housing inventory. Hopefully by the end of today's video, I can help you go from defeated and uninspired to hopeful with a creative solution and perspective of new opportunities. Your first home purchase is the most important cornerstone of your lifelong ability to build wealth. Beyond flashy finishes and the number of bedrooms, my first time home buyers understand that their first home purchase is the stepping stone towards their highest vision and potential. I've talked about it here before when I bought my first home, I never expected to have a Nashville address. I was from the suburbs just north of here and that's where my community services and favorite local businesses are. However, when I found my first house, it was too great of an investment opportunity to pass up. I purchased it below market value before things got extra wild in 2020 and it has now almost doubled in value because of the market in my set area. That being said, here are some things I wish people would know before buying their first home. One, save more than what you think you'll need for a down payment. There are other costs associated with moving and my last few moves I wish I had saved for moving and packing services. My friends and husband's truck work great, but after moving about 20 times in my life already, I am over it. Also, any inspections you have during your due diligence comes at the buyer's expense. Depending on the scope of inspections you choose, I would recommend having a few hundred dollars just to give you a buffer. Second, the second thing I wish people would know is to look past the cosmetics. I find myself training my first time home buyers to look past the fact that if something is dated or has a bad paint job or an ancient carpet that they shouldn't just throw it out. Quick story for you. When I bought my home, there were some cosmetic obstacles right away. My house used to be this faded blue paint color through most of the downstairs. There was a bedroom that was a yuck brown and there was a purple bathroom and a pink and blue bedroom. They loved their colors. One of the first things I did was have the entire inside of my house painted a neutral color throughout. I personally chose to hire someone to paint it because where I could have done it to bond with my house, I was about to be in wedding planning mode and was fresh out of the gate and starting to build my real estate business. It made more sense to me to hire the workout during that time for those reasons. It was less expensive to pay someone to paint the whole interior of my home than it would have been for me to purchase an already shiny, modern, updated house. One more memory on that note, the carpet in that house was the same way, super gross. You could actually see where their feet tracks were through the living and dining room downstairs. I'll never forget it. My dad and I actually replaced the carpet with high quality LTV before I moved in. It was a nice update and it's my personal favorite flooring for pups. Again, cheaper to replace the floors than buying a home at resale that was already upgraded. Third, the third thing is to actually get your home inspections. In the past couple years, many buyers waived that right and regretted it. Thankfully, I did conduct a home inspection and termite inspection. Picture this for a moment. You wouldn't purchase a car without test driving it, right? You wouldn't buy a used car without taking it to your trusted mechanic for a once over, right? Same thing with a house. You should know what you're buying and most likely your home investment will be way more than any vehicle you probably ever own. Another short example, 
I had a seller just earlier this year that was having moisture issues in her home. And she said, I don't understand why that's important. The inside's upgraded and it's cute. To which I responded, it won't matter how cute it is if it caves in on itself from the inside. Home inspectors' jobs are to go through your home that you want to purchase and nitpick the heck out of it to find any reason you should not buy it. Of course, they won't word it that way, but I warn my clients before we meet with the home inspector by setting the expectation, hey, now his job is to find anything wrong and you might feel like it's too much, but there's something not perfect in every home, including new construction, and their job is to share their findings with you. Don't be afraid to ask questions. They are there to work for you and offer peace of mind so you can move forward with your purchase with confidence. For me, there were probably 50 plus things on my home inspection report, including things like little nicks in the wall or a small hole in the siding. I requested about a dozen things to be repaired by the seller before closing, and fortunately, he agreed to do 11 of them out of 12. I was super happy about that. I'm super fortunate that we had a positive transaction and the agent was incredible. Fourth, visit the home at different points of the day and the week. I recommend driving through the neighborhood during school pickup times, lunch time, rush hour, after dark, etc. When I bought my house, I was excited about the house as an investment opportunity and that was great. However, we had a homeless problem in the woods nearby that I was not aware of until after I moved in. There was a group of people that would camp in the woods and then walk to different corners of the busier main streets to beg. Didn't know that. And that's just not fun, motivating, or inspiring for me personally to drive by every day. One of my neighbors actually had pulled their home off the market about six months after I moved in. And when I called to ask him why, he shared that he felt that he couldn't sell his property because of the impression the homeless community was making on the potential home buyers. So he just decided to renovate his home and stay there. Fortunately, that problem has mostly been remedied by the state, getting them out of the woods and working on some beautification efforts on that main road that they used to frequent. Thanks, Nashville. So keep in mind resale value as well. Just because you're willing to overcome an obstacle of some kind doesn't mean it might not still hurt your chances of reselling it later. And five, chat with the lender before you think you're ready. Fortunately, I had 3% of the down payment saved already and excellent credit. However, I've helped many home buyers for six months to a year to get them in a stronger position to buy. By connecting them to a good lending partner of mine, they can run what if case scenarios to indicate which debts should be paid down to best support their pre-approval. Not all debts are created equal. I have a friend that my lender and I have been helping and in just a few months, his credit score has actually gone up 90 points with the advice my lender gave him. Remember that for your first house, it's not about finding your dream home the first time. It's about achieving home ownership in a way that sets the path towards the bigger dream. Together, I can help you make a wealth building investment that makes your dream home a healthy reality, not just a dream. Owning and leveraging real estate is one of the greatest ways to scale your wealth building plan. Hopefully you found this helpful. And I wanna know in the comments below if any of this surprised you or if you have a story about a similar experience. I wanna hear it. And hey, if you're wondering what a potential home sale or purchase looks like for you in the next year, all my contact information is on the screen and easy links are in the description for your scheduling convenience. Most of my clients start working with me six months to a year before they're actually ready so we can prepare before they start feeling rushed. One last thing, if we're not connected on the gram yet, head on over there to stay plugged in for lighthearted and authentic info, tips, and day in the life content as we navigate the ever-changing real estate market. If you enjoyed today's content, please like this video and share with someone you think.